the Lord has been ministering to me what the blood of Jesus is capable of doing now that's more important I want you to hear this the blood of Jesus is capable of doing so the blood of Jesus most people just know that it has the capacity and the power to take away their sin but from the scripture perspective the blood can do much more than actually we know so today I'll be sharing something it has been so much in my spirit for the past days the blood of Jesus and the peace say with me the blood of Jesus and peace if there is something that actually you need most is peace do you know if the devil wants to finish you the first thing he takes away from you is peace before I begin to share we will look at the attributes or things that takes away the peace now what do you think takes away the peace now so the devil will bring diseases and these diseases if once you have sickness in the family there is no peace once the amarito problems at home there is no peace in your life once there are financial problems there is no peace can you have peace if you have no finances now now i just want you to see this can you imagine you have bills to pay and you don't have money can you have peace the one who is not answering it means you have peace in your poverty those of you who you know that you need this peace you will answer louder can you have peace you have a lot of money that you have borrowed you have a lot of debts can you have peace so we want to understand why jesus will come on earth why would he die now today i will look at this perspective now let's go into the scriptures quickly we'll go into isaiah 9 verse 6 the Bible here reads, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father. All those things is not my message tonight. But he shall be the Prince of Peace. Now, I've been thinking about this for the past days. How many believers today have peace? And God told me 98% of believers do not have peace. What have I said? What have I said? It's either there is a problem in marriage, either they've got serious debts, either they've got issues to do with their health, either they've got issues with their family, 
There's something happening that it has to remove their peace. So God told me, He said during Easter, He said, Establish my peace on my people. I have come here, therefore. I have come here, therefore. Wherever you're watching from, wherever you are, peace will capture you. So when God was ministering to me, I, I looked at my wife and I said to her, you know, I think it was two weeks ago, and I said, I said, I said, do you know with all what we've been going through, there is one that is evident. I said, we have been captured by peace. You see, if a peace captures you, no matter what you are facing, miracles will still happen. The reason why the devil removes peace from people because he knows the moment you are at peace hello the moment you are at peace a miracle can happen that's why God said what be at peace and know I am your God be still and know you cannot know his God when there are hostilities around you. It's only when you have peace. <sighs> I'll explain this properly. But let's go back. So why would Jesus become the prince of peace? What is this that he's looking for? Because the only thing lacking in church is peace. We have people who are praying, but they do not have peace. We have people who are fasting, but they do not have peace. The enemy is using banks. The enemy is using banks. The enemy is using diseases. The enemy is using your husband. The enemy is using your wife. The enemy is using your children to remove your peace. But by the end of this service, God will do something that will remove all the hostilities happening around. And why he died on the cross, it was to establish this peace. He knew you have no peace. So he has to be a priest of peace. Can I, can I go ahead? Can I go ahead? Just give a neighbor high five. Say receive the peace of God. Come on. Tell them against in your marriage, your family, your finances, your health. Receive the peace of God. Declare it will happen. They will receive peace. I'm telling you now. There will be peace from now. All nonsense happening in their family will stop happening. Whatever the devil is doing, it will stop happening. There shall be a settlement. There shall be a full stop. Somebody say receive the peace. <laughs> Let's let go. This peace, many people don't have it. I can promise you, People are praying, people are fasting. We even have men of God, women of God. They are passing through things that they are removing their peace. So Jesus, being a priest, keeping someone in his kingdom who has no peace, it doesn't make sense. You didn't hear me. 
Being a prince of peace, keeping someone in his kingdom who has no peace. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? Can you imagine you are in his kingdom and you have a prince in that kingdom? But you have no peace. Now, let's go. Let's look at five points of peace in the Bible. But before we establish that, let's agree that it is only the blood that can bring peace. It has been like that from the beginning of the years. Our own country here, for us to receive freedom, for us to receive peace, people shed blood. In South Africa, people to have peace, they had to shed blood. In Zambia, blood was shed. In America, for them to receive the peace they have to take, there was shedding of blood. You can never receive peace until someone has shed his blood. So Jesus has to shed his blood. Now, if the blood was shed for you to receive peace and you have no peace, then the shedding of the blood was in vain. So Colossians chapter 1, from verse 18 to 20, we see that the blood will bring the peace in your life. And he is the head of the body, the church. Who is the beginning? The first from the dead. That in all things he might have the preeminence. In verse 19. For it pleased the father. That in him should all the fullness dwell. In verse 20, that's our point. And having made peace through what? Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Having done what? Come on. Having done what? Come on. Having done what? Having made what? How did he make this peace? Through what? So when we talk about Easter, people just talk about, oh, it's for our sins. No, no, it's beyond that. You, you need to know the death of Jesus had nine things it came to do. From the scripture, the Bible says that's among the nine things is peace. So from the scripture, the Bible says the blood, it says having made what? Peace. Through what? Come on, I want everybody to answer my question. Through what? Hmm. So we sing. The blood of Jesus set me free. You, you understand that? So you talk of sin and what? And sorrow. Now, I want you to hear this. So the Bible says, having made peace through the blood of his cross. If this can only happen to you, that you can receive the peace of God. Can we settle your matter? Should we settle your case? 
Should we pray for your matter to be settled? Having made peace. So if you have no peace, what is the reason of the blood to be shed on the cross? Because the reason the blood was shed is to make peace for you. Now, no matter what, let me just give you a good example. No matter what I have been through, past, present, or even in the future, you will, if you look at my face, the only thing you will see is peace. Whether the ship seems to be sinking, whether it looks like it's floating, I'm always at peace because I know it's going nowhere. Do you know why? Because I obtained peace from the cross. The blood of Jesus gave me peace. If you are here, you, you, you understand what I'm trying to talk about. Whether you're watching me or wherever you're watching from. You need to know, point number one. Peace comes through the blood of the cross. Please, write this statement down. The peace comes through the blood on the cross. If you have issues now, you are sick, you are lacking peace, the blood made you have peace. In other words, you will be healed. If you have issues, financially you are affected. The blood brought you peace. That financial problem will be resolved. If people are fighting you and you are worried about it, do not worry. May you just have the peace. Because God sent his son by his blood he gave you peace. So no matter whoever is fighting you, the end product, the end result, you will see the peace of God. It will not continue like that. I prophesy the peace. I declare the peace. Hear this. Believers are under attack. Do you hear me? Believers are under attack. The devil knows how to bring you down. All what he's trying to do right now is to remove your peace. But let me tell you something. By his blood, he gave you peace. I want you to declare this. That from now, I receive the peace of God. Say so through his blood, I receive the peace of God. Come on. This peace is very important. Hello? Hear me, hear me. If you can only have peace, I can assure you, you, you have every prayer request you need with its answer. I can promise you. Why God does not move in certain people's lives? Because they have no peace. God doesn't work where there is no peace. It's like spirit. God is spirit. So for you, for God to move in your life, you too must be spiritual. Because spirit causes the spirit. Peace causes peace. So if you have no peace, God being peace 
Jesus being the Prince of Peace, he cannot move. That's why when they were all crying, that's why when they were all crying, asking Moses, what would we do? They were told one thing, have the peace and you will know I am God. God cannot move. He waited until everyone was having peace. When everyone had peace, then God said, raise your road. And the way was made. Until today, God is waiting for somebody to have the peace and he will move. The reason why he is not moving, you have no peace. The difference between us and other people is that we have the peace. No matter what we face, there is the peace in us. No matter what we have. So the blood of Jesus brought this peace. Number two, this peace is for believers. This peace is for who? And it can be prayed for. I can actually pray that God should give it to you. In the book of First Corinthians, if you are there, um, First Corinthians chapter one, verse three. Grace be unto you. Wait a minute. Let's start from verse 1. I want you to hear this. Let's start from verse 1. The Bible says, Paul called to be an apostle of Jesus Christ through the will of God and soothingness, our brother. Verse 2, unto the church of God which is at Corinth. Now verse 3, grace and peace. From God our Father, and from the Lord Jesus Christ. It says this grace. So Paul makes a declaration. He says grace be with you. Peace be with you. Who is he declaring this peace to? To the church. So this peace. The church is a partaker. You, where you are, you need to receive this peace. You need to receive the grace. So Paul understands that the only thing people need in the church is grace and the peace. You may have the grace, but if you do not have peace, you will live a life as if there is no grace in your life. Somebody say grace and peace. So you need the peace. Are you following? We are going somewhere this message. <laughs> say grace and peace. It is for who? For believers. I want you to say after me. Say in the mighty name of Jesus. In every area, the enemy is stealing my peace. Peace is coming. Say no more access to the devil. Peace in my family. Peace in my finances. Peace around me. Put your hands to the Lord. Put your hands. So this peace is for believers. Number three, this peace rules our hearts. Colossians 3 verse 15. This peace, when this peace comes around you, this peace starts ruling. And let the peace of God rule in 
your heart. He says, to the which you were also called in one body and you'll be thankful. He says, this peace rule in your hearts. In the King James Version, it says, may the peace reign. So peace can rule. Now, what does that word mean? It means, can you imagine I'm, I'm, I, I am pressed. I have problems everywhere. You know what happens? Fear can take over. Anxiety can take over. Worry can take over. But when peace is ruling, when peace is in control, peace rules over worry. Peace rules over sickness. Peace rules over what I'm facing. Peace rules over family problems. Peace rules over financial problems. Somebody say, receive the peace. But remember how this peace came? How did this peace come? How did the peace come? So when we hear about the cross, everyone has the same message. But I want to just share with you a very different angle. This cross, Jesus, when he was shedding his blood, he saw you had no peace. And he said, you know what? I need to give this person something. Peace. So the peace can rule. Tell your neighbor, peace can rule. Say, I therefore declare over your neighbor from now onwards, peace will take over you. Say there'll be too much peace that you have no prayer petitions anymore. You see, James and Peter were put in the same prison. But one had so much peace. Imagine they tell you they'll kill you in the morning and you are sleeping. The Bible says, and Peter was sleeping with death sentence to be killed in the morning. Was he killed? An angel appeared because there was peace in the prison. You fell to sleep. Because you have no money to pay rent. What will happen? How will I, how will I, how? Peter had a death sentence. Yet he was sleeping. An angel had no choice but to come. You see if there is peace around you. Angels have no choice. But they just have to appear. Because God moves in peace. I decree and declare. Every worry you are having. Every anxiety you are having. Every depression you are having. Every question you are having. Every fear you are having. Disappears now. May the peace rule. May the peace take over. In the name. Sit down. Stay tuned. If there is a moment I want you to know, if there's a moment you have to fast, you have to pray, no matter what, it is now. 
Not because the devil fears sacrifice. He does not. The devil fears the word of God. He fears the light. This is why when Jesus was fasting, the day was finishing. The devil didn't even fear the fasting. That's the day he approached Jesus. And he said, if you are a son of God, turn this stone. He doesn't fear fasting. And what Jesus challenged him with, he didn't say I was fasting. He said what? It is written. This is why when you give, when you pray, don't just do these things. You must be in the weight. You see, what the devil fears is not how much you pray, how much you fast, how much you come to church. How, no, what he fears is are you knowing the word? The reason I'm teaching this topic, I want you to know the word. So when he comes, you kick him out. You show him the way. You say, go out now. I command you in the name of Jesus. Welcome back. If peace captures you and it begins to rule, say peace. That's point number three, right? Point number four. This peace will make you put your eyes focused on Jesus. And your mind focused on Jesus. In Philippians chapter 4, verse 7, the Bible says, and this peace, it says, and the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and the minds through Jesus Christ. In NKJV, it says, and the peace of God, which surpasses understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds through Jesus. Did you hear that? The peace will make you to put your heart and your mind focus on Jesus now 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 I want you to say this can you imagine you you have a lot of debts and all your thinking is about them would you put your mind on Jesus your mind goes where where does your mind go your mind will go to your problems. But if you have peace, whatever you face, your eyes will be on Jesus. But if you have no peace, your mind and your heart will be what will happen. So what next? What? So will I die? Will they repossess my property? My marriage, what's going to happen? My children. But if you have peace, if you have peace, your heart, your mind will be focused on Jesus. The reason why believers are falling, they put their mind and their hearts on their problems. Not on Jesus. He says, this peace will rule your heart. This peace is for believers. This peace came through the blood on the cross. Someone said, the peace of God. Are you following or you are? Are you following or you're not following? Ask your neighbor. Are you, are you hearing this message? Give them a high five. Say receive the peace of God. Tell them again receive the peace of God. Tell them again, receive the peace of God. 
say in your business, in your finances, in everything you do, receive the peace of God. Come on, come on, tell them again, receive it. Hallelujah. Let's go another point. This peace comes directly from Jesus Christ. It is different from the world's peace. It is the peace from Jesus and it is different. In John 14, verse 27, the Bible says what? Let's quickly go to the book of John. Peace I live with you. Can you imagine Jesus would just be talking about peace, 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 peace. The only, the only thing he discovered that the church was lacking was peace. He says, peace I live with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world gives. Give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled. Neither be afraid. Simple. There are people who their hearts are troubled. How would I handle this? What will happen in this way? It says, do not be troubled. Do not be afraid. I give you peace. It says, let your hearts not be troubled. Someone right now, they don't know what will happen. They are highly troubled. He says, do not be troubled. I give you peace. How did he give the peace? How did he give the peace? How did he give you the peace? Through the blood. So he says, do not be afraid. I give you peace. Peace. I can, as a prophet, I'm able to see in the future. And I'm seeing someone in this building. And someone watching me at home. And someone watching in the overflow. God will put peace in every area. This peace was given through his blood. Somebody say this peace was given through his blood. Put your hands for Jesus. It says, let your hearts not be what? Someone you see in church speaks in tongues and prays in tongues. But he's crying in the bedroom. What's, what's up? Nothing. You're lying. There is some, a huge thing going on. What's wrong? Hey, am I talking to somebody here? Let's say we want to repossess your car. Then Hey! Where is your cross? Not 
want you. Tell them, come and get it. Tell them, take it. They'll come and say, um, we are giving you two more months. The following day, they find that you have paid the whole debt. And you tell them, I don't want any debt. I said, I'll even pay all the remaining months. We got the peace of God. The Bible says this peace surpasses all knowledge. This peace goes beyond understandings. According to your understanding, this disease will kill me. According to your understanding, my family will break. According to your understanding, they will fire me from work. The Bible says, this peace rules you and then after ruling you, it goes beyond any understanding. It is not what you understand. It is not what you know. This peace can turn around events. Somebody shut and receive the peace. Are, are you understanding? Let's look at another point. This peace protects you from the problems that the world have. It protects you from problems which people in this world have. Let's look at this. John 16, verse 33. The Bible says, These things I have spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. In the world you shall have problems. Simple. So if you see 80% of Jesus' ministration is for us to have peace. He says, I speak these things. Which things? All the Gospels, Matthews, John, whatever Jesus was talking is for you to have peace. He says, because in the world, you will have tribulation. But I speak the word for you to have peace. So when you have the peace, you don't have the problems of the world. On this Easter, you shall live to remember that I received the peace of God. And from that day, I do not worry, I do not fear, I do not cower, I do not stagger. I have the peace of God. Glory be to God. Somebody shout hallelujah. Peace. It separates you from the worldly problems. Even if problems come to you like this, they don't find you because they find you at a place of peace. Just like a person has confidence if police will come. And they say, oh, well, no one will touch you. It's the same peace we have. We are surrounded by so many witnesses. We are covered by angelic beings. We can never lose. We can never lose. You can never remain the way you are. Your life will turn around. Receive the peace of God. I pray, receive the peace of God. Let me give another point. Should I? This peace is a fruit of the Spirit that the Holy Ghost, it is an external evidence that the Holy Ghost is inside of you. Peace is an external evidence 
that the Holy Ghost is in you. In Galatians 5 verse 22, the Bible says that the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace. So peace is a fruit to show the Holy Ghost is inside of you. I want you to tell your neighbor. Say peace is an external evidence that the Holy Ghost is in you. So, in other words, what's the, in other words, if there is no peace, it is an evidence that what? Thank you. If there is no peace, it means there is no what? What is the opposite of Holy Spirit? What is the opposite of Holy? Evil. So if there is no Holy Spirit, what spirit is in there? So peace is the external evidence of what is inside. No matter what you are facing, you need to have the peace. Somebody say, I will win this battle. I will come out of this situation. Somebody say, I will be healed. Somebody shout, I will testify. Somebody shout, I will have my miracle. I will break through. So I have the peace of God. Given through the blood. Put your hands for the Lord. Put your hands. Say the peace of God. Lastly. And the most powerful point. Alright. Are you following? There are five points, but I've broken them to make them a little bit more understandable and make and made them to be a bit more. Now, lastly, I want you to hear this. Can I tell you this one? Are you ready for this one? Hey, this piece has the capacity to destroy foundations of your suffering. I told you, I told you, tell your neighbor, tell your neighbor, are you receiving the peace of God? Are you receiving the peace? Ephesians 2 verse 14 Oh, you love this one. <laughs> oh, you will love this one. Go to NIV. Go to NIV. You will love this one. How? Oh. For he himself is our peace. Comma. Who has made the two groups one? Uh, 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 uh. He himself is what? And he has made two groups. Wait, wait. He has made how many groups? How many? Do, do, do you know what that means? It's a military statement. If there are two groups of... And then they become one. The war is what? The war is what? Can you answer? The war is what? Is the war over or the war is through there? If two groups becomes one, what does it mean? So the Bible says the peace makes two groups one. I don't care what you're facing, but this is the end of warfare. 
This is the end of every battle. Two groups. It means it is the saying of the Bible which says if a man's way pleases the Lord he makes his enemies to be at peace with him. Did you hear the word peace? God makes his enemies to be peace. 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 So God can end two camps if you receive this peace where people are fighting just because you are there the fighting is over <laughs> somebody said the fighting is over now check this scripture the Bible says for he himself is our peace who has made two groups one hey now we are going to the main one now and has destroyed the barrier he himself is the what our peace him being our peace he has destroyed every barrier we have people here with different barriers these barriers you have they are broken by he himself him being our peace he has removed every barrier I don't know whether your barrier is a case I don't know whatever barriers you but the Bible says he 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 our peace him our peace so Jesus is our peace now the peace which is Jesus every barrier around you now what is a barrier what is a barrier do you know the meaning of breakthrough when somebody says I want financial breakthrough what are they saying there is a financial barrier so the Bible says he himself being our peace this peace rules our hearts and makes us focus our mind and our hearts unto Jesus and this peace was given to us through his blood on the cross and this peace is an external evidence of the Holy Ghost in us and he himself being our peace every barrier we have he destroys it can I prophesy to somebody here the peace of Jesus is breaking every barrier is breaking every barrier somebody shout and receive the peace we're not done let's go back to some scripture it says for he himself is our peace who has made the two groups one and has destroyed the barrier the dividing wall of hostility you know what is a dividing wall of hostility all these are military statements when that's when they're saying their hostility is going on it means there's two active fights are happening so the dividing war in the old testament or in the old days they normally they were building walls around their cities around their nations so if soldiers are on the other side of a wall other soldiers on the other side of the wall and they are fighting that war is a war of hostility it is dividing these two camps 
but they are hostilities. But the Bible says that ends when the peace comes. That's why he's called the Prince of Peace. If you have this peace of God, whatever wall of hostility disappears around you. Am I talking to somebody here? Raise up a right hand. It's in the name of Jesus. All demonic hostility happening around my career. Any demonic hostility happening in my family ends today by the blood of Jesus that gave me the peace. 